Gold Rush follows the Clayton brothers, new to gold mining, aiming to pay off their family debt. With Juan Ibarra's help, they started the season with high hopes. But things go downhill when they don't hit their target and end up broke because they spent too much money drilling. How did the season end so badly for the Clayton brothers? Did they pay off the debt? Join us to find out why the Clayton brothers faced such humiliation. Digging to pay the family debts. Across California Creek from Fred Lewis's claim, brothers Brandon and Brady Clayton are chasing 500 ounces of gold they need to help pay off a crippling family debt. But so far, they brought in just 0.3 ounces of gold. With no spare cash, they're operating hand to mouth with a team of just three and relying on a homemade wash plant built from scrap steel. Half a mile downstream from their plant, the brothers are banking on hitting a bonanza at Golden Acres. But first, they need to build an access road. Golden Acres is kind of the holy grail, but it's just going to be a bit of a struggle to get the money to build the road. The Clayton brothers planned on pulling a quick 50 grand in gold from near their wash plant. We'd like to see three quarters of an ounce per hunter, but their first run was a bust, as they went back to the drawing board just lost for words. To get their season back on track, the brothers need to find gold to pay for the road to Golden Acres. They confess to having to mine as they go. It's not ideal, they said, but without Golden Acres, we might as well pack her up and go home. Our season is done. The only thing at this point to do is to go prospecting. We'll see what we can find, if we're going to get it. The farmer announces this season that's the only way we can do it. We're kind of out of options. We're going to go down, up to some virgin ground, dig some holes, do some pans, and see what kind of numbers we can come up with. The creek would have come around the corner, and it would have rubbed on the bank. So any gold that that creek was carrying would have hit the bank and deposited right there. A third of a mile downstream from their wash plant towards Golden Acres is a bend. When fast-flowing water carrying gold hits the inside bend, it slows, causing the heavy gold to sink and settle on the creek bed. Hopefully there's enough gold in the box to keep buying fuel and keep going ahead. Won't know until we run it. Let's open it up and start hauling it to the plant. The Clayton brothers are taking a huge gamble on running this unproven bend to pay dirt. If it doesn't deliver the gold they need to build the road to Golden Acres, their season could be over. After a while, they saw some gravel here, which is a good sight. Once you see gravel, you're going to see gold. This is the first load of pay dirt they found. It's one step closer to Golden Acres. To fund their move to Golden Acres, the Clayton brothers are betting big on getting a huge pay dirt. They decide to weigh it out and get it over with. And they found 11.59 ounces, which was worth over $20,000. Nearly half the gold they need to get down to Golden Acres. There are no mining activities on the show that can't have challenges on the acre. The Clayton brothers have more challenges with their equipment and sluice more. How did they resolve the challenges? Rough challenges on the Golden Acres. The Clayton brothers were closing flakes of gold through their DIY trommel, so they decided to call in two experts, Freddie Dodge and Juan Ibarra, to help fix their handmade trommel. They made this equipment from scraps of steel themselves and named it Dirt Devil. A trommel is a mining equipment that consists of a cylindrical drum with numerous holes of a specific size. This helped in classifying materials. As the drum rotates the smaller materials, the rolls fall through the hole, while the remaining ones flow out the other end of the trommel. Trommels are widely known and used in mining operations of various sizes all over the world. But miners around the world prefer gold trommels because the gold-bearing gravel is added to the hopper and enters the rotating drum, which helps break up the material further. It is used to help separate and classify materials for further processing, separating smaller gold-bearing material from larger substrates, such as rocks, pebbles, and boulders. These can be made in any size to meet the requirements of the miner. On larger operations, 
The trommel is typically integrated into the overall wash plant setup. To operate a trommel efficiently, two people are typically required. One person would feed material into the trommel, while the other would clear any discharged waste material so that more material could be fed through the machine. Freddie and Juan have been working on the remodel of the Clayton Brothers homemade wash plant for the past two days, but there's been a bigger gap than expected. Juan will have to back the truck to the plant while Freddie will take it in and start getting it set up. Brad said if the trommel is not running, it's not making any money, so we need to get this off the ground as soon as possible so we can get it up and running ourselves. We'll put it in and weld it. I can't begin to tell you how amazing it is to work with the amazing people I'm working with right now. I'm learning more and more every day. We'll fly through dirt, get gold, and be as happy as we can be. He further stated, we are aiming for 500 ounces this season, which is a large amount of gold, and we are ready for the drill. We have new rifles we've been working on, and still got a lot to do in the sluice we're not making money right now, so we're worried. They bought rifles that are a bit like the Hungarian rifles, pretty efficient, easy to clean, and they'll help brighten up our boxes. With the nugget rifle up top, which will catch most of the gold, but don't let gold pass by it. After a while, Freddy decided to take a break with Juan, and he worked on the trommel. They gave the equipment eight hours to run to see if the ounces of gold would be higher than the previous time, and it definitely would be. The brothers were quite anxious about the outcome. Sensing their worry over the repaired trommel, Freddy said, We're going to head over to the box and see what it looks like, but it's looking good so far. Even the boxes are running, guys. Yeah, very nice. It's pretty, even all the way across. It's running even and running well. The rifles look great. So we'll find out because the scale doesn't lie. At California Creek, Brandon and Brady are eager to see if Freddy and Juan's fixes will improve their gold take. After some time, they shut the equipment down to take a glance at the sluices, and it shows it's working and they could find gold already. The boxes are full of gold already, and when weighed, it adds up to 6.73 ounces, which is a 65% total increase compared to the last time when they got 4.01 ounces of gold. After testing their junkyard equipment, the Clayton brothers had to get help from Freddy Dodge and Juan Ibarra to make some important changes that could result in their best seasons. Freddy on the site affirmed they're going to lose gold for sure. After eight hours, they turned the water down slightly till it went off. The test has been completed to produce water and material. They try to create a 90-degree corner without manipulating it, which is why it is loose. Loosely packed, they must take control of both water and materials and make it do what they want it to. Then install a V-shoot in there, since all of the guns are made too tightly. They've got to solve it. The payment is being directed to the left of the sluice box. Where slow-moving water compacts the soil with fine material, gold is difficult to settle elsewhere. Excess water is washing gold directly out of the sluices. To provide an even flow, Freddy and Juan will install a V-shaped chute that divides the pay dirt and water equally between two channels, then enlarge the Hungarian guns and put expanded metal beneath to grab extra gold. It'll take several days to complete, and a mound of steel. They plan to pound her hard and finish her off, making sure everything is clean before they start the next run. And they will do another full run to be sure they got you an additional cutter. Brad is going to go as straight as he can with the equipment. The youngsters sprinted 720 yards of pay soil during the eight-hour test. They have a couple of big days ahead of them, but they plan to hammer it out, get it done, and then move on. The gold from the test run will be used to see whether Freddy and Juan's improvements can enhance their gold recovery rate, with 4.10 ounces for eight hours. That's half an ounce per hour but certainly Brad thinks they'd get another 15% more gold on the recovery end. On the recovery path, they had to purchase some steel which is similar to a Hungarian rifle. The team plans to spread them out more and make them lengthier, which is believed will be incredibly efficient, easy to clean, and help to paint the boxes yellow. Freddy assured them that with their nugget rifles up top, they would catch the majority of the gold. They had to let a lot of that good stuff go, 
He also said the lighter weapons are effective at capturing that fine gold. It has a different height for it, so we'll put only one section across here. They have to run her for eight hours and see what happens, get this dirt devil revved up. The crew agreed to do it, affirming it was quick and easy. Freddy asked Brad to start the pump for the water to wash the particles. The following eight hours will determine whether Freddy and Juan's fixes were effective and disclose that the Claytons are on pace for a historic season. Brad said he is quite excited right now. The first several buckets are going through the trommel. We'll go over to the box and see what it looks like. But things are looking good so far. Perfect, I can feel it. It's perfect. Barty pointed out how well the boxes are running, which is relatively even all the way across. Freddy said it should be kept running. Then after a while, he got tired and ready to leave the crew. He said, I'll tell you what, it has been a long few days and both Juan and I are extremely tired. But at the same time, it appears to be running. The rifles look fantastic, so we'll find out because the scale never lies. After eight hours, they decided to look through the sluice, and they noticed the change because it caught the majority of it during the first phase of the change. They found gold in each box. Freddy appreciates his buddy Wanu faces the crew and says you can see it in the box, but the scale does not lie, so let's clean it up to see what we have. The first test run produced only 4.1 ounces of gold. The gold weights, 6.73, which is nearly one ounce per hour. That is $12,000 worth of gold for an eight hour run. Though lots of profits are attached to mining activities, miners do have their moment when they lose gold or earn low. What could be the problem? What did they earn? Poor earnings on the show. A distance from the huge Klondike mining operation, the ex-Green Beret surgeon Fred Lewis is engaging 30 feet of ice that's holding his pay dirt hostage. They are using pumps, showering water onto this ice to soften it quicker. But everything we've done to this point, the Clayton brothers with Lewis decide to hack through a huge ice. They haven't been able to achieve much, and it's either they hold up for this to soften, which might take a complete year. Brandon disagrees. He said, I've guaranteed my guys a 500 ounce season. We have to be mining presently. The Clayton brothers are moreover chasing the dream. Brandon, who is 23 years old and one of the most youthful mine bosses within the Yukon and Brady, his 20 year old brother. Brady said he's got a map of the places where they are chasing untouched virgin ground. Let's go see on the off chance that we will put a mining arrangement together for the season. Brady incorporates a hockey grant, but is devoting his summer getaway to making a difference so the family gets back on its feet. He said, I think if we have a shot at getting our cultivating ground season gold, we ought to discover a few great grounds and stop. The source of the California River gold is the 60 miles top of blame. Over thousands of long times, streaming water dissolved gold from the blame, taking it downstream. In the final season, the Claytons mined out the intersection of two rivers, where the water current moderated, permitting the overwhelming gold to sink and be caught by normal rifles. Working on the same hypothesis, Brady distinguished another junction half a mile downstream, where he's trusting the same handle has deposited more gold and will provide a monster payday. He claimed that with the gold that we're shooting for this year, we require a parcel of ground, a lot of area. We got bills to pay. We have to offer assistance to our family, so we do not discover anything. We might as well go domestic. So the water would have moderated down, and if it carried gold, it would have been fair kept. So let's burrow a hole right in this ground here. Toss that over, get me to rock, and I'll container it. This is often kind of do or kick the bucket for not even our season, but for our family. Brady affirmed he's planning to get in that gap and get a few rocks here since they got a part riding in the pound. We got to see a few genuine gold, if we think we're getting 500 ounces. This has got to be the container to do it. They found seven enormous gold particles. They predicted there were probably 15 colors in the container, but they needed to get farther to see into the container. They have to engage in this action so they can achieve their 500 ounces in this season there. 
Brady's arranged a short strip of arrival fare, a hundred yards upstream from their wash arrangement. He trusts there's enough gold in the ground to back their street and get them to a gold bonanza at brilliant sections of land. He said they are planning to begin running out, to begin with a bit of soil this season. I'm aiming to take the beaten gravel off, and it's almost ten feet deep. We'll take the top five. So then we're not weakening our baked goods. Brandon considers the leading gold lies at the foot of the pay layer. He called Brady, and this is aiming to be ours to begin with a small test here. He further said, let's get the soil to dig. I just like the sounds of that. Feels great to be back in a machine. Not more often than not to shake the truck, but I do not mind running these things. They are fun. Beats the hell out of settling, I can tell you that. The gravel looks good. But we attempted an upper seat final year downstream, and it didn't pay off. So I'm hoping that's not the case. They are required to discover at least an ounce of gold to demonstrate the ground is wealthy enough to back their street to brilliant sections of land. Brandon was confident that there was gold in there, Brady. We're seeing gold after the first pail, so that's a beginning. After their mining activities, they decided to put the gold mine on the scale and see what it told. To prove the ground is wealthy enough to fund the street to brilliant sections of land, Brandon needs at least an ounce of gold. Zero three of an ounce worth less than $600. Rather than giving the 50000 he needs, Brandon concludes he lost cash running the drilling process. He said, and we are not indeed a half ounce. Man, it kind of looked like an ounce closer to an ounce. Well, we know that's not getting to work. So 200 yards for po three of an ounce seems like a loss venture. With these new brothers on the Gold Rush show, their activities and their relationship with fellow miners, one would be curious to know them, their experience, and much more. The Lifestyle of the Clayton Brothers Clayton Brothers have gotten to be fan favorites among Gold Rush watchers in 2023. The two brothers who are up and coming within the mining world appear that they are young individuals within the game, trying to demonstrate themselves. In this episode, Christos Doyle had an interview with the Clayton brothers. Christos affirmed that he had heard about them for a long time, and it's great to finally check out their operation. He said he has worked on the show for a long time, and it's been a while since there's been a new boss. Christos asked if it was weird for them to have cameras in their faces all the time. The brothers said it's a change, and that they are trying to get used to it. Christos then asked how long they have been mining in the family, and the brother explained that it's been a family operation for a while now. Braden said, Dad started seven years ago, and he ran for two or three years, and then I started to come up here in the summer. Brady was helping us out, and then I just kind of took over almost. It also revealed that they have been working, fixing, and turning wrenches since when they were the age of 14 and 15 years old. Brady added that, before such a tender experience, their parents would always bring them to the shop just to clean the garage or something to do outside the house. They were always growing up around equipment and further stated that they were taken to job sites and watched mining equipment. They said, there's a picture of us in a piece of heavy equipment when we were younger, so we've always grown up in that atmosphere, around machines which we can relate with on the mining site. So we are doing the same thing that we would do back home, moving dirt, but it's more like a passion. When asked what they were doing in Alberta, they responded that they've taken gold mining as a passion. When we get up in the morning, we live and breathe gold mining at this rate, and we love to do a lot of fixing. Christos diverted a bit to ask about their sister who is 16 years old, and they regard her as the best rock truck operator they have. They affirm that there might be a real entrepreneurial spirit in the family. About other miners on the show, Christos reveals he met Parker Schnabel when Parker was 15 years old and his family was in the road building business. He then asked what their relationship with Parker was like and if they had met before. The Clayton brothers said their grandpa originally started the family business, which sparked their father's interest who got into the family business at a young age as well. Shortly after their father took over, he gave birth to them, which was why they grew up in the same atmosphere, 
which also propelled their interest in mining as well. About gold, the Claytons affirm that seeing the gold in the sluice box, then on the waiting table just excited and always wanting to get more. The box is all about gold. They've been working all day to make sure they get their goal in the box, and if they see it it shows their efforts are paying off, and further confirms they are okay with the land. Brandon said it's a good feeling of a kind of achievement like, you know your work is getting somewhere. They revealed they chose their location because it's a virgin ground with potential coarse gold, plus it has a fraction of miners unlike other mining locations, even though it has its challenges such as the crooked road and it's on the side of a mountain. Then they gave Christos a little tour around their mining grounds. In the trailer where they live, they have a strict no-shoes policy. They clean up before climbing into their house. Christos affirmed they had a nice setup with a television, couches, beds, big bathrooms, and showers. Their garage was a bit of a hoarding scenario. They affirmed they don't throw anything away because they might need it. The garage has all kinds of extra hoses, hydraulic stuff, welding rods, hydraulic motors, fittings, and a lube filter. They also have a grill they claim has seen better days, though they rarely use it. They have a big industrial stove to cook meals when needed. They have an old phone too since they couldn't do cell phones. Whereas a few cast individuals of the show, Gold Rush have been on appearances since it began in 2010, such as Parker Schnabel, others joined afterward, and a few, such as the Clayton brothers, are exceptionally unused to the Discovery show appearance. The Clayton brothers' father, Glenn, ran a commerce within the Albertan oil areas for nearly 40 a long time, but the company went bankrupt. The family afterward turned to gold mining to pay off their obligation. In September 2022, the brothers were presented as cast individuals. The Discovery Channel writes that, with their family in obligation, their unassuming operation needs each grain of gold they can discover. Fortunately, they found the brilliant sections of land where the gold is twice as wealthy as the rest of the Klondike. In 2021, the Clayton brothers to begin with showed up on Gold Rush and worked near Fred Lewis during Season 12. Amid Season 13, the Clayton brothers can be seen setting up their mining house with the assistance of Freddy Avoid and Juan Ibarra. Despite the truth that gold mining may be a famously flighty calling that's inconceivably extreme to enter as proven by Fred Lewis, who has battled reliably despite being in his third season. The Clayton brothers have been strikingly effective since they began to appear. Without a doubt, in a later scene, they found 10 ounces of two days, something which fans having a difficult time accepting, considering how troublesome this calling can be. A few fans on Reddit are addressing the authenticity of the Clayton brothers' victory in Season 13, especially the claim that they were overseen to find a respectable 10 ounces of gold in a river win in which Fred Lewis couldn't discover any gold. One of their clients said, Everything we have seen focuses on, there was exceptionally small gold in that rivulet, and neither Fred nor the Claytons found much. But presently they found 10 ounces in two days, by running the excavator back and forward between the cut and the plant. The client went on to claim that the arrangement itself is doctoring the real number of ounces that the Clayton brothers mine each week, and indeed stated that the brothers must not be an obligation due to the costly gear they've leased. One of the fans who agreed that as it were legit mining being done presently is Tony and Parker saying that Fred Lewis, the Claytons, and the Winchester are no more than paid on-screen characters at this point. So there's completely a part of behind-the-scenes offer assistance, even though there have been a few changes over the long time that the show, Gold Rush, is intensely scripted. Discovery Channel itself encompasses a distinctive clarification for the brothers' exceptional sum of victory claiming that they've earned so much gold due to their disclosure of the mineral-rich, brilliant sections of land, where they claim that the gold is twice as wealthy as the rest of the Klondike. Whether or not the Clayton brothers are getting a few kinds of help behind the scenes, these disappointed fan comments make it clear that the Clayton's phenomenal victory is one of the foremost stunning angles of Season 13. What do you think of these mining activities? 
Leave your comment in the comment section, and also like, share, and subscribe for more exciting content.